The government issued a consultation back in September 2019 relating to the, the, the next set of building regulations. And particularly what we're interested in on this video is part L, which relates to uh, energy and energy efficiency. Well, I think this is really significant because we haven't had a, a big step in terms of sustainability for about 10 years in the building regulations. It's kind of stood still a little bit. So we've got the future home standard, which comes in in 2025, which is expected to be a 70 or 80 percent improvement over the current building regulations and will result in a, a whole number of things. For example, no gas boilers, oil boilers and so on will be allowed in new homes uh, and will be a really, really significant step. This we see as, 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 a, as, a, as a quite a big step towards that. It'll give us sort of 20 to 30% towards that 70 to 80%, if that makes sense. This is going to make a big difference, the switch to primary energy, and it really is, is to get rid of an unintended consequence where we've been really, really successful at decarbonizing the grid. So the grid now is a quarter of the level of carbon that it was in, in the last set of building regulations. And that's great because it means we've got more, uh, more gas and less, less, uh, less coal. We've got a lot more solar and a lot more wind. But one of the downsides of that, of course, is that when you do put a, a, a carbon saving technology on like solar panels, you get less credit for it because you're actually offsetting less carbon. So by using primary energy, which really is how much energy we do we need to produce in order to get this unit of energy that we're using, uh, makes it a more realistic measure. Homeowner affordability is, is really important and the last thing we want is, is people in, it's living in cold homes or, or, or paying sky high bills. So one of, one of the problems of course is having a decarbonised grid is that you can put in just straight electric heating into a home uh, and it ticks the box from a carbon perspective but unfortunately for the homeowner it's really expensive. So that what they've put in is an additional measure in there to make certain that, that homeowners don't end up with high bills and make certain that that's, that's covered as part of the building regulations. The government proposed two options. They call them option one and option two, imaginatively. Option one is a 20% improvement over the current building regulations. And, and that would assume that most of those improvements are made through fabric, so in, improvements in insulation and triple glazing, for example, as well as maybe a few uh, technologies like weight, wastewater, heat recovery and solar. Option two is more adventurous, and that's the one, by the way, that the government recommends. And that would assume a 31% improvement over the current building regulations and definitely would expect technologies like heat pumps and, and solar panels to be used as well as some improvements in fabric. I would expect the new building regulations to come into force probably late 2020. There'll then be a, a transition period where, where the new building regulations are implemented. Now normally speaking, when a site starts, uh, that has a set of building regulations for its whole life. What they're now planning is, is that every house individually will be based on the building regulations at the point that it starts. But there will be a transition period of, of a, we don't know what that period is going to be, it could be a few months, it could be a year, um, but that will be much shorter than it currently is. Homeowner education is going to be really key now when we introduce new technologies. Heat pumps, for example, operate very, very differently to a gas boiler. So they operate at a much lower temperature, which tends to spook people sometimes. So people need to understand that. But also they need to leave these, these, these heaters on for much longer than a gas boiler. And if they don't get this right, they'll either end up with high, sky high bills or, or with cold homes. And that's something we really don't want. So homeowner education is really important.